This week in the Missouri Senate, we review one of the first measures to be vetoed by the governor. When the Senate passed the budget in April, the senior care services were fully funded. We all got behind it. We see it as a viable answer to save the seniors. House Committee Bill 3 sought to modify provisions relating to funds for vulnerable senior citizens. The proposal also became a decision-making measure toward how the fiscal year 2018 budget would work. Missouri Senate Appropriations Committee Chair Senator Dan Brown of Rolla says lawmakers spent hours trying to find a way to make the legislation work. And we funded the senior services line that had been set up. We took the point count back down to 21, and we restored half of the provider rate cut. That's all we could do the way the budget was written at that point. Committee Vice Chair Senator Ryan Sylvia of Kansas City adds the Missouri Senate version of HCB3 was paid for. And frankly, what we did in HCB3 has been done before. As recently as 2013, we directed the state treasurer to deposit into the Senior Services Protection Fund $55 million in that year to make sure that these services were funded. But it's been done before. It was implemented. It is constitutional. It was carried out. It was voted on by many of the people who are still in the legislature today. And it was administered by the governor. So we know it works, and we know that it will solve the problem. Missouri Senate Minority Floor Leader Gina Walsh of Bell Fountain Neighbors says the goal was to curb spending while keeping the Missouri Property Tax Credit Claim, a.k.a. the Circuit Breaker Program, in place. That we all came together and somebody said, well, here's an idea. We all got behind it. We see it as a viable answer to save the seniors in this state that desperately need the resources that Circuit Breaker provides. Senator Shalone Kiki Curls of Kansas City, who serves on the Missouri Senate Appropriations Committee, adds part of the concern hinged on the ability to sweep other departments and programs to find money for Circuit Breaker. For the $35 million, total over $3 billion here in the state. That's less than 1%. That funding is adequate. Those funds that were not excessive, and those, of course, that there would be maybe some danger or concern to those in the state that we would potentially reduce funding, of course those funds wouldn't necessarily be eligible. Lawmakers will have the opportunity to override the governor's veto when the legislature returns for the annual veto session in September. July 14th marks the final day the executive branch can sign, veto, or allow legislation to become law without a signature. In the meantime, Missouri senators plan to return to Jefferson City in two weeks to resume the second extraordinary session of the 99th General Assembly, which will end by law on August 11th. And remember, you can follow these and other issues facing the Missouri Senate by visiting our website, senate.mo.gov. Reporting from the State Capitol, I'm Dean Morgan.